Welcome to Real Estate Photography for Dummies. On this video, you're gonna learn exactly what real estate photography is, why a lot of people think it is an awesome business to start and a great way to make money, and how you can get started as a real estate photographer. This is a fully comprehensive video for beginners. So diving into the video, what is real estate photography? And it's actually more called real estate media these days because what it is, is when a house comes for sale, there needs to be marketing assets created that will help sell that house. So that would be photos and videos, 3D tours, floor plans, and a bunch of other add-ons. And that all together is called real estate media. And the reason this industry exists, at least in the way it does today, is because the way homes are sold has changed. In the past, you would go to a real estate agent, tell them what you were looking for, and they would look in physical books back in the day of what homes were for sale, and then they would take you to tour some of those homes. Well, today the process is very different. You literally just go to Zillow or realtor.com, you look up homes, you find one you like, and then you contact the agent. And so the way you know that you like a home or not is the way it's represented online. Those photos, videos, 3D tours, and other things that are used to promote the home. So that's what real estate photography is and why it exists. The next question people usually have is, well, who are your clients? Is it the homeowners? Is it real estate agents? And the answer is 99% of the time, it's real estate agents. How the real estate industry works is an agent will win a listing agreement to list the house for a certain period of time and get a commission when that house sells of typically around two and a half to 3%. And they're gonna do their best to make sure that home sells because the 3% commission on a million dollar house is roughly $30,000. So they're gonna spend some of that potential $30,000 to help market the home properly because if they do a good job and the home sells, they get 30,000. And so a lot of times they'll pay companies like mine, three, six, sometimes even a thousand dollars to take and create media for that house, photos, videos, and 3D tours. So our clients for the most part are real estate agents. It's very rare that the homeowner pays for our services directly. Usually the only time that happens is when the homeowner is selling their house for sale by owner, but that's less than 1% of our business. Now that you know what real estate media is, why do I think it's a great opportunity and why have a lot of people decided to start real estate media businesses? Well, reason number one, especially if you're coming from another type of photography, is the consistency. So with real estate, homes are always selling and you're always doing shoots. It's a very high volume business. So compare that to weddings where you may do one wedding a week. If you're busy and it's always on the weekend, and real estate is not that way. It's very realistic for people to do three or four shoots per day as a solo real estate photographer. And with each of those shoots being between 250 to $300 on average, some markets are more, you can see how you'd have the potential to make some pretty good and pretty consistent income, anywhere from 500 to $1,000 a day as a fully booked real estate photographer. And that's just the start though. You can scale a business like I've done with mine, where I have a team of photographers that are shooting for us. In our case, you know, 20, 25, 30 shoots is a busy day. And so you're really able to expand in that way. The second thing that's nice is, especially if you're coming from another type of photography, you don't have to shoot after hours and on weekends. So a lot of times when you're shooting weddings or portraits or events, those are gonna be after hours in the evening when people are available or on the weekend. And so it doesn't really create a good life style for someone that wants to just work more of a normal job, right? So as a real estate photographer, most of your shoots are going to be during business hours. And you may be thinking, well, that's great eventually, but what about in the time before I'm able to quit my job and do this full time? And that's the nice part is you can shoot on weekends and evenings, but it's not a requirement of the job. And so we work with a lot of wedding and portrait senior photographers who are tired of that after hours weekend stuff and want to work just normal business hours. Those two points are really kind of side points. There's three reasons that I think real estate media is awesome and we call it the three R's. So number one, it's repeat business. Meaning when you work with a real estate agent, they hire you to take photos of every listing that they get. And a lot of real estate agents, that could be one or two listings per month, especially for a busier one. And we even work with teams that do a few listings per week with us. And so that makes it a great business because you're always not having to go hunt for new clients, right? You just keep working with the same clients over and over and over every time they have a listing. And so that repeat business aspect is really nice. But the second thing, and this goes along with the repeat business, is there's a lot of referral potential. So you have to get some initial clients and I recommend a strategy that I teach called the Instagram method to do that. If you wanna learn more about that, there's a workshop linked below. But once you use the Instagram method to get your initial client base, most of your clients as your business grows will be from referrals because real estate agents are always talking to each other. For example, you have a listing agent, right? Who's listed a house for sale. 
Well, their job is to find a buyer to buy that house. And the most common way that happens is via another real estate agent who's already working with the buyer saying, hey, that's the perfect house for my client. Those two real estate agents work together and get that deal done. And so real estate agents are always working with each other. And that means there's a lot of referral potential. They're also working in the same offices in some cases physically together. And if they need a vendor, a new photographer, for example, they will ask someone else in their office. And so you get a lot of referrals. And the cool thing about this is most of the clients, the thousand plus clients, clients that we work with at my photo business didn't come from me going to find them. It came from a referral. And so long-term, most of your business growth will be from referrals, which I really like because number one, you don't have to do anything. Your business just grows. But number two, you don't have to sell. And I don't love the selling process, right? I would rather my clients do that for me because of the referral business nature. It works like that. And number three is it's required business. Now it's not legally required for a real estate agent to hire you to take pictures of a property for sale, but it is required in the sense that it helps them achieve something that's important to them. They pay you $500 for the chance at, in most cases, a $10,000 plus commission. And them hiring you makes that commission more likely because it helps them market the property properly. You now know what real estate photography is and why it's an awesome industry. The third thing, and probably what you're wondering right now is, well, that's great, but how do I get started? Maybe you do have camera experience, maybe you don't. There's probably a lot of questions in your mind and you're not sure what to do next. So that's exactly what I'm gonna talk about. And the first thing I want you to know is that you don't have to be a photographer to make this happen. And you don't have to have photography experience. I think a lot of people say, hey, it'd be great to shoot real estate, Eli, but I've never touched a camera before. And, and that's okay. When I first started my real estate photography business, I wasn't coming from a background as a professional photographer. Yeah, I played with cameras a little bit and I liked them, but it isn't a skill set that's required to get started. A lot of the clients that we work with in our coaching program, a big percentage of them have never touched a camera before, at least in this way in their life. And so don't let that discourage you. Here's the general process I'd recommend you think through and work towards. Number one, is you have to know what type of real estate you're going for. And a lot of people think, hey, I, I've got Better shoot luxury homes if I want to make a lot of money. And that just isn't true. And there's a lot of reasons for that. The first reason is there's not luxury homes in every market. Most of us live in normal cities. And the thing with the normal city is that most of the houses are normal houses. So if you look on Zillow, for example, and you type homes for sale in your area, you're going to see a ton of red dots on the screen. Those are all houses and chances are most of them aren't going to be luxury houses. So if we're just purely thinking, hey, how can we make the most money? We need to target the most amount of properties, which are going to be normal houses. And so you look at the bigger real estate media businesses, the successful ones out there, the vast majority of them are not shooting luxury properties. Next thing on your mind, once you know what type of real estate you're going to be shooting, which is not luxury houses, probably like, okay, great. But what gear do I need to shoot real estate? And the simple answer is pretty much whatever you have with a wide angle lens. But I have linked below my entire gear kit recommendations, and that's gonna break it down based upon your budget. And it actually gives you the exact gear that my employees use at my business, as well as like a super budget friendly option. So you can find that linked below. But the key here is to not overcomplicate things. Do not spend a lot of money on gear. This is where the photographers coming into this business go wrong. They're used to expensive gear. They think they need to spend a ton to get good results. And that's not at all the case. You'll see in our budget kit, we recommend a camera called the Canon M50. It's like $500, it's pretty cheap for a camera. And we actually use that camera at my entire photo business for over a year, just to prove the point that you can totally do this with a cheap camera. The only reason we ended up switching is because the battery life on that camera is not as great. When you're shooting three to four houses a day per photographer, kind of sucks if you're always changing batteries, but when you're just starting, it's okay to change batteries to save money. And the second reason we switched is because the camera is just physically smaller. So it's not as easy to use again when you're using it all day long. So that'll tell you what gear you need below. As far as how to shoot real estate goes, we do not recommend using any complicated workflow of any kind, especially if a flash is involved. And so the deal when you're shooting real estate is the lighting is a big challenge because inside the house is almost always darker than the outside of the house or the window views. And so to shoot great real estate photos, some of which you can see here, you'll notice that the outside, we can still see through the window and the inside looks great. Well, if you just take a photo with your phone, you're gonna notice that either the inside is really dark and you can see correctly out of the outside, or the outside looks like the sun is parked right outside the window. The windows are pretty much white and you can see nicely on the inside. So you have to have some process to balance that lighting. And what we use is a process called HDR. And you may have heard of that before. And if you're a photographer, you probably rolled your eyes because HDR of the past was pretty bad. Our specific process takes three photos 
And then we have those outsourced to an editor who blends them together in Photoshop and gives us that nice final photo. And that may seem pretty complicated if you're new to photography. It's actually really simple. You just have to put in some time to learn how to do it. It's just a camera setting. You press a button on your camera. It takes those three photos for you. So it's really simple. Highly recommend going with HDR and a hand blended workflow, which means you're outsourcing it to someone who is blending it in Photoshop. You're not using a software. Doing that over flash is my recommendation for you. So now you know what type of real estate to shoot, you know what gear you need to use, you know a little bit about the process. The next question that probably comes to your mind and the most important one is, well, how do I get clients? And the good news is it's pretty easy to get clients as a real estate photographer. The method we teach to all of our coaching clients is called the Instagram method. And there's a workshop below that will walk you through an overview of that process. You can take a look and learn more for yourself. If you don't use Instagram, it's okay. Like we'll show you how to set it up from scratch. But just know that out of all the methods we've tested, which growing our photo business to over a thousand clients who use us consistently, we've tested a lot of methods. And the Instagram method, per every hour you put in, just results in the most amount of clients. So we just put all of our effort on that, or at least 95% of it. So that's an overview of real estate photography. The thing to keep in mind is success starting a business is really about keeping things simple. So I encourage you as you work through this, maybe watch this video again if you're brand new to this industry and you wanna learn a little bit more, and then take the time to learn about each of those things. But the key here is not to overcomplicate it. We help people in our coaching program go from zero experience to a business doing thousands of dollars a month in less than six months in a lot of cases. And we do that by helping them do less, but doing more of what actually counts. And so as you go on your journey to start your business, if that's what you plan on doing, just keep it simple. And I highly encourage you to, if you're serious about this, check out our coaching program. You can see the link below to apply. It's a really simple process and we're not a high pressure team. So you'll fill out a quick application and then you'll book a call with a member of my team who's gonna do a game plan call with you. And they're gonna look at your market, they're gonna look at your goals, and they're gonna tell you exactly what coaching would look like for you because it's custom to you. And we actually guarantee results and that's where the customization comes in. We wanna know what your market looks like, what your plans are, and then we'll say, hey, you do the coaching program and you do the things that we require you to do because obviously you have to do the work to get results. Here's what we guarantee you'll get. If you don't get there, we we cut you a check for the difference return a portion of your investment. And so we have it set up in a way where we need to talk to you to make sure that we can actually make this work for you in your area because we're putting our money where our mouth is. So I highly encourage you to check that out, fill out the quick app, talk with my team, and then go watch a bunch of my YouTube videos because I post a bunch of stuff on here that will help you get started. There's a ton of good videos, so go watch them.